Host Mike Nice, the nicest kid around. Over six years, I've been the face and the voice of the Mike Nice Talk of the Talk show. It was actually this date, six years ago, when I was a senior in high school, when I first started my first debut live show. I was a senior in high school. I was young. I was unorganized. I was nervous, uh, unexperienced, but I was ready to go. Yeah, and I briefly wanted to thank some of the people who helped me throughout these six years. So first and foremost, I want to thank God for waking me up and allowing me to conduct the program for Citizens Television. Without him, none of this would be possible. I want to thank The Rock, my family, the person who I strive to be like every single day, the love of my life. I want to thank my mother. Uh, she has meant more to me than I could, you or me could ever imagine. I want to thank my older sister, Claire, who's also my role model, uh, my closest friends. I want to thank the viewers at home who watch my show uh, faithfully. And even if you are new viewers who just uh, stay tuned and watch, I want to thank you. I want to thank all my crew members who helped me ever since 2006, uh, including Leo, Lamont, and John, who are on the set with me today, uh, producing another good show, Mike Nice Talk of the Talk. Uh, I want to thank the Citizens uh, staff here at Citizens Television, where I conduct most of my show uh, for you guys at home. I want to thank all the workers here at Citizens Television. And a special thanks to the city of New Haven, who has embraced my show and uh, challenged me and just has gave me uh, encouragement and support along these six unforgettable years, and your words of wisdom has mean a lot. I'm asking you to continue to watch my show and to stay with me as I fulfill my dream as having a nationwide talk show and uh, taking all your new ideas and challenges along with me. So thank you, this is my six year anniversary. And, and I thought, what, what, what better to have you know, a special person on my six year anniversary. And uh, today's guest, you have seen him on TV. He has made appearance on Will and & Grace and General Hospital. He is one of Oprah's biggest fan, if not Oprah's biggest fan. And I thought I was, I thought I was uh, Oprah's biggest fan. I respect her craft and her work. Uh, but today I have with me the one and only I have Pablo Presto. Pablo, thank you for uh, taking your time and joining me on the Mike Nice Talk of the Talk Show. Thank you, and happy anniversary. What an honor to be here on your six-year anniversary from today. That's great. Thank you. I definitely uh, appreciate it. And, uh, uh, again, I want to thank you for uh, taking your time out. I know you're a busy guy, especially with some of the new events you are doing in the past 2012. So I know uh, taking the time out is definitely critical. So I de thank you on the pa beyond uh, behalf of my crew members, and I thank you again. How are you? My pleasure, Mike. My pleasure to you and your team as well. Thank How, you. How's everything going? Everything's good. I, I, I just got back from Chicago. I was there for a week and just got back to L.A., and um, so things have been good, I have to say. So just like you would say, I thank God for all the blessings and all the good things that have been happening with me and my career and my life. So it's been good. Right. And uh, now a lot of people have known you from different you know, aspects because you work on different uh, you know, network TV to talk. Uh, the yeah. talk, uh, also, like I said, being the parents of Will and Grace and General Hospital. Yeah. But I guess the majority of my viewers and even <laughs> nationwide viewers know you as the energetic guy who, you know, wanted to be found and who was found by the grace of God by Oprah, who, yeah. walked, who walked into your store. Uh, tell us briefly a little bit about that, uh, that moment. I know it sounds cliche if you keep on repeating it over and over, but... I know you say you wrote hundreds and hundreds of thousands of letters to the production of Oprah, and obviously we all know Oprah is, is, is a busy woman. So did you ever dream in your wildest dreams that she would actually even come to your store, let alone even read your message and tell us Never, you know. never. I mean, you know, people keep thinking it's cliche, like when I keep saying this story over, but the funny thing is it's never boring for me because I could say it over and over and over because right. it's such a strong passion and something big that happened to me that I could just talk about it over and over. So, I mean, I would never have thought in a million years that she was coming to my father's grocery store. You know, like you said, I wrote hundreds of letters. Right. And, you know, so... Um, then, you know, one day, one Thursday morning, I was working at customer service. I was, I remember very clearly, I was putting, making some labels for the pasta in the aisle. Right. And then next thing I remembered was just Oprah and her crew just walking what the viewers saw, calling my name, you know, shouting, Paolo, Paolo. Mm -hmm. And for that, you know, the viewers would be on TV for that, for three seconds, I was in disbelief. I didn't know what was going on. You know, because it's just a regular morning. And then the next thing I knew, I see camera guys, light people, and there she is 
Oprah Winfrey, calling my name, and it was just a moment that I am blessed, grateful, that I will never forget, because it literally changed my life. I mean, she came there to tell me that she got me a walk-on speaking role on Will and Grace, which, like, I, I don't think I've ever been as excited as I was that day, that mm. morning. So that was amazing. Does, sometimes you ever pinch yourself and just looking back and say, oh, my gosh, was it real? Oh, it's, it, I'll, I, I think, I mean, I think about it every day because I have people who, who tweet me, Facebook me, asking me questions, how did it happen, you know, and then because it's one of, I, I am, it's one of Oprah's favorite surprise guests, I guess, right. you know, as she has said in her, the last season, so for me, it's just, I do pinch myself because as growing up, you know, in Chicago, I would go to her show like twice. You can only go, I think, once or twice a year, and I would try to go three times a year. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of working at the grocery store, I would be upstairs calling the Harpo Studio number, trying to get a ticket for me, whoever wanted to come with me. And I would go, and I'd be sitting in the audience, and I would be like, ah, just one day, one day, I'm going to be on her show. Just one day, I have a story, and I want it to be heard, and it's going to happen just one day. Just the timing has to be right, you know. And, and prior to her coming to my dad's store, I was, at her audi I was in her audience like two weeks before with a friend. And I even said to him, I go, just watch. One day I'm going to come through the wood doors that she would come out before, she, you know, that she had in her old set. And then two weeks later, there she is at my dad's grocery store. And so I, that's why I'm a big believer in dreaming big, you know. Well, congratulations. And, and like, like I was saying, like a lot of people say, your dreams can never be too big. You never know. I agree. You know, when I was writing emails to her from my computer, or even writing letters, I would, I would, at the time I would be mailing letters to Harpo Studios, I would have my family, you know, coming into my room, looking at me like, what are you doing? You're writing to her again? And I'm like, right. yep, I have, I have to let her know what's going on. I have to keep, I want to tell her to help me out because she's the only one that I truly believe that could help me and, you know, kind of get out of the family business and kind of start a little, you know, a career for me that I would, you know, would want to be in. Right. And, and speaking of the family business, I'm wondering when, you had to, you know, break it down to your father and tell him that, you know, this is not what I want to do. This is not where my heart belongs. I want to know, you know, how was that, you know, um, outcome? Was he supportive? Because I know you're really close with your family, and I know yeah. he really wanted you to help with the family store. So when you, tell, when you finally told him that, you know, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to, you know, pursue my dream, uh, how did he take it, and what, was he supportive at first? You know what? Before Oprah came to the store, I've tried many times and it was just hard. And I right. always tell people, if you've seen the movie My Big Fat Greek Wedding, if mm. you're familiar with that, right. there's, a, there's, a, there's a time when Tula, the daughter, goes to the restaurant and it's like 5 in the morning, it's dark outside, and she looks outside from the window and she's thinking, look at my life. And, you know, and that's what time I would start at the stores. I would start at you know, 6 a.m., get to the store, and it's just not where I wanted to be, and I've told my father, and it was just hard because it's, you know, you make a good paycheck, as my father would say, and, you know, you have, you know, and it's just great. That's what you would want in life. But I just knew that there was other dreams I had, and as long as I'm in the store, it just things weren't going to happen. So I think it changed for him the day that Oprah came to the store, mm -hmm. and he saw my reaction, you know, right, screaming, right. crying, jumping up and down. I think that's when he got it, and I think I remember Oprah telling me outside of the recording, outside the cameras, she said, you know, the look on your father's face is something I'll always remember because he saw the joy in me that I think he had an aha saying, wow, I, I think my son really does have something else he really wants to do. And, you know, and I kind of been holding him back, which he never wanted to do intentionally. Even and